Hallo, ik ben Julia. Ik kom uit Nederland en uit de provincie Gelderland. Hi, I'm Elina Bos. I'm her sister. We're both from Holland and we're big fans of churchmilitant.tv. And really, you should be too, so sign up today! The second annual churchmilitant.tv Retreat at Sea is coming up in January. This year's theme is about the Catholic Restoration and what you can do to get involved. Click the link for more details. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Vorce. A few days ago, Bishop Thomas Tobin of Providence, Rhode Island told a Rhode Island TV station he was changing parties from Democrat to Republican. The 65-year-old bishop, who has been a registered Democrat since 1969, says the big moment of awareness came for him when he saw the 2012 Democratic Convention and its insistence of promoting the culture of death. While all faithful Catholics should be happy about His Excellency's self-described aha moment, this should also be a huge indicator of just how deeply flawed, deeply flawed things are in the church these days. How could it possibly take so long for a Catholic bishop to see the evil that the Democrats have foisted on America? And for the record, we know the Republican Party leadership in many ways also supports many of these same evils, but just treads a little lighter because of their rank and file. So this is no homage to the Republicans, but rather a serious questioning of what is in the minds of so many American bishops. It has been clear since this megalomaniac Obama appeared on the stage of an earlier Democratic convention out of nowhere that he is an agent of hell. And if you think that's over-the-top language, actually it's quite tame when you look at his record. From the slaughter of millions of pre-born innocents and exporting that all over the world, to the advancement of sodomy and exporting that all over the world, to the continued destruction of the family through his social and economic policies, to his almost casual race-baiting and class war agitating, and so forth, this man does the will of Satan at every turn. And so does his party. And enough already with the tired old, well, they care for the poor. They care for the poor like hell. Their social justice garbage and pretended war on poverty has been and is nothing more than a giant wealth redistribution program aimed at creating an enormous underclass that they throw a few crumbs from the table to so they can get their votes every election cycle. They have wrecked the schools, planted Planned Parenthood in their neighborhoods, backed any and all thoughts, fads, and philosophies that decry any reverence or thought of God, appointed judges who dismantle whatever natural law reasoning actually was present in our founding documents and directly caused the deaths of tens of millions of Americans who were never given a chance to see daylight. This has been their game plan and action since Lyndon Johnson and his so-called Great Society back in the 1960s. And what do we have for it? Death, destruction, marginalizing and mockery of religion, and a society rushing headlong into hell. And it took until the 2012 convention for a Catholic bishop to see this? In various interviews with a number of different bishops over the past few years, they have each admitted that Obama enjoyed at least, at least, a 50-50 support among U.S. bishops, and some said he enjoyed majority support. So here is a serious question. How on earth can a bishop who supports this agent of Satan be trusted to ensure that the faith is being faithfully transmitted? Seriously. The great defense on the part of these liberal-minded bishops is, oh, the poor, oh, the poor, oh, the death penalty, oh, the death penalty. Poverty and execution are not intrinsic evils. Check the catechism. But abortion, sodomy, euthanasia, contraception certainly are, and they are the backbone of the Democratic Party and have been for decades. Yet every election, we hear this liberal bishop pablum conflating intrinsic evil with social ills as though they are the same. They will not take a stand against these things because they, in their minds, are locked in the halcyon days of the 1960s and live in a pretend world of peace and joy and flower power. For the liberal bishops who have contributed to such an undermining of the faith all these decades, 
There is much more here than coming to some dim awareness of the evil that has been staring you in the face all these years. There is a requirement for you to renounce your personal contribution to it, not bemoan some vague set of social circumstances that are complex and difficult to get your hands around. You liberal bishops have helped create this culture of death directly by the work of your own hands. Don't think that the blood of those babies, of those souls that fall into hell because of their evil sexual practices, will not weigh in the scales against you on your judgment day. You are the successors of the apostles, not political operatives for an evil agenda that sounds nice and sugary on the surface, but is evil to its core on the inside. You need to repent of all of this, all you liberal bishops, you liberal bishops who stamp on tradition in the church, who let the rot of horrible catechesis flourish in your own diocese, who let abuse after abuse remain unchecked in your parishes under your care. You have supported a political system which has brought morality in this country to its knees and made a virtuous the butt of jokes. Yes, you. Do you think you will escape responsibility for your deeds and their consequences, your sins of omission and commission, what you have done and what you have failed to do? The truth of the faith has been strangled on your watch with your complicity. You are shepherds appointed by God Almighty to shepherd souls to Christ, but you have led those souls right into the arms of the enemy. You have compromised with evil. You covered up the rape of children and pled ignorance afterwards. You have allowed hordes of homosexual men to become priests and then promoted them after ordination to influential positions in the church where they could rain down and do rain down their spiritual terror on the unsuspecting faithful. You have not just allowed, but you have encouraged a spirit of radical feminism to run wild in the church, in your own ranks, and in the pews, universities, parishes, seminaries, houses of formation, and so forth. You have sat atop a near total destruction of the faith, unprecedented in our sacred 2,000-year history of the church that would have made Nero blush. You have coddled murderers and sodomites and evil men of every sort. You have rolled out the red carpet for them in your cathedrals. You have delivered Holy Communion to them as surely as Judas handed over our blessed Lord. You have abdicated your role as shepherd and let the wolves ransack the flock. In all the sincerity it is possible to muster, with the deepest charity for your souls, you need to repent publicly. You need to say much more than I switched parties. You need to do much more than simply say, we were gun shy when it came to talking about sexual morality, as Cardinal Dolan told the Wall Street Journal last year. You need to say, I have been unfaithful. And then you need to open your eyes and see the destruction of the faith that you have brought about, and you need to spend your remaining days trying to make amends. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. The Restoration Retreat, the second annual Retreat at Sea from churchmilitant.tv. We invite you to set sail with us this January the 12th for a seven-day retreat at sea to discuss the who, what, where, when, and why of what has gone wrong in the church for the past 50 years. The idea of a Catholic restoration is an immensely dense topic and will undoubtedly take a week's worth of conferences to truly understand. There are many questions circling the minds of faithful Catholics. Why have all my children left the faith? How have I become the crazy religious person in my family? What can I do to restore the faith? How can I get others involved? How did we get here and where are we going? All that and more will be on this year's Restoration Retreat from churchmilitant.tv. Retreatants will be afforded the opportunity for a true spiritual escape from emails, ringing phones, and noisy neighbors. All the rigors of the worldly life will be paused for a week of daily mass, confession, exposition, benediction, Eucharistic procession, and the Holy Rosary. All in addition to the daily conferences, terrific weather, and delicious meals with great Catholic conversation. Please click the link and we'll see you in January.